I'm going to go really fast through a lot of content. Um, so hopefully that forces some questions out of you. Um, what I like to do is I put took some bullet points off of the vendor's websites. That's great, right? You can read them. Um, I'm going to talk about like how do you use them practically, um, either as data scientist or as um, just any kind of consumer of web technologies. Um, we'll ask questions at the end. Um, so basically, Elasticsearch, uh, what I typically use it for is to um, full, uh, full text search primarily and grabbing data from either logs or systems or um, sometimes one time I had scraped data from a ticketing system to do um, some really basic metrics over periods of time. Um, <clears throat> for the use cases we're going to go over today, we're going to uh, scrape some web content, throw them into Elasticsearch, search over that. Um, and then the other example is going to be uh, using GitHub's API, grabbing data uh, from its APIs, doing something with it, storing it in Elasticsearch, and then showing some of those results in Kibana. Um, and for Redis, um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, features it has. Typically, what we're going to do is we're going to get some key values, store them in Redis. Um, we are going to also uh, get a dictionary and set it into a hash. We're also going to, I'm going to show you um, a good practical use for the list um, data, um, data structure within Redis. Um, and kind of talk about um, other things you can use it for, if it's persistent and those types of things. Um, and for the demo, we're going to basically do very similar to Elasticsearch, but putting that data into Redis. Um, and then um, the final demo will basically show you um, taking data out of it and rendering it in a dashboard, um, just getting some basic uh, survey stats, um, and then also uh, putting data into Keen.io and showing that also using Google Charts. So for the first example, um, ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape a list of websites that I've uh, listed here. Um, I'm going to connect to Elasticsearch. Um, I'm going to basically strip out all of the HTML tags um, and other kind of data that I don't want, like links or something other than that. Um, and then eventually I'm going to uh, create a JSON blob and then throw it into Elasticsearch. Um, so ultimately, um, what I'll do here is I'll run this script so you can see exactly what's happening. Um, so I'm scraping the content, putting it into JSON. So I hit several websites. Um, you can see here, this is some of this is my personal website. We hit NPR, uh, Google News. Um, and I'm using Beautiful Soup for that, um, BS4 or version 4. Um, and like I mentioned, I'm stripping out all the HTML tags creating the JSON, and then storing it to Elasticsearch. And we can see the output here. Um, now this is for basically if you want to do full text search. Um, so um, if there was any type of data, um, this was an example using, you know, obviously on websites. Um, but you could store any data in Elasticsearch and search over it. Um, this is probably the easiest uh, to show you because I'm sure somebody in here is at least, or at least half, I would hope half the room have scraped website or got data from websites or from GitHub or from some other API source and store and want to store it somewhere other than just your laptop or just doing quick analysis using pandas or something. Um, and how to kind of view those results um, in the project that I've listed for uh, on the front of my thing, my GitHub repo, I'll show you at the end. Um, I'm just going to basically run a simple uh, Angular site to show you the results in a full text uh, search mode. Um, so one of the sites was um, some news and my own personal website. So if I were to type in something like Trump, I'm sure some result will show up. If I were to type in music 
or uh, Marshy Ski for an exact result. Um, the results get rendered in HTML using Angular's uh, Elasticsearch plugin. So this was to basically demonstrate um, scraping web content, um, doing something with that web content, which was removing HTML tags and putting it into Elasticsearch, and then seeing those results in a full text search um, kind of way. And all of this stuff that I've shown here in this project is going to be listed in uh, this repository in my GitHub. So I'm going to show you something uh, very similar, um, but this time instead of actually using Beautiful Soup, we're just going to hit an API using Python's request library. Um, so just like that, when we connect to Elasticsearch, um, we create our, our index, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more at the end. Uh, making the request, so I'm just going to basically um, get a uh, return from GitHub based on a search of users named Tim or Tim somewhere in their name, um, and then actually making the request. And what that and what this request or what this response from the API is going to look like is something like this. We're basically going to get a count of around 30 users. Um, back in the items array and we're going to iterate over that uh, over those items and we're going to take out um, their login name and then we're going to hit another github api to take um, all their repo data and say hey what's their favorite language that they use um, and one of those repos uh, responses will look something like this where we say uh, a particular user show me all of your repos um, and we're going to have a field in here called language. Um, and basically we're going to do a max of all the languages and tell me what's their favorite language of a particular person. Um, so I'm going to create a, uh, just a, a list um, of people that we got from the login uh, JSON response. And then we're going to iterate over that list and go and fetch all of their repositories on GitHub using a request, uh, a request, uh, or a get request. And then we're going to add the languages um, to yet another list. And then we're going to get their favorite language. We're going to create JSON or uh, a dictionary. And then eventually we're going to convert that to JSON and post it to, to Elasticsearch. Um, in this particular string, um, Elasticsearch will have your main index where you want to store data, your type, um, which in this case we're just going to call people, and then ID would be um, typically a unique identifier or an identifier for um, a particular person uh, in this case. So how we're storing data is we're kind of segmenting our data via um, our index. And then within the index, you can have multiple types. And then within one type, you can have multiple IDs. So in this case, we have GitHub as the index. The type will be people. Because we can have people, we can have repos, we can have languages, we can have pull requests, we can have all kinds of uh, other types. And then the IDs, essentially, um, is for that particular person. Or it could be a repo name. It could be um, a random string of numbers. Um, anything um, that means something to you. And then since we're already using the Elasticsearch library in Python, um, you could do something very similar via requests. But since there's already a library, I just consumed it. And what this one will look like is so basically right now it's going and um, when it says created true, it means it actually created an elastic search. Um, there's no failures. Um, and this is for every user that we've pulled from uh, the user list from GitHub. And then we went to their repos and then said, hey, give me the max of all their languages. And that will tell you their favorite language. Um, now, now, obviously, I'm showing you GitHub data. This can be any data that you want it to be. It was just that it was just easy because it's a public API. Um, I could have done stuff with you know, a data set. Um, I could have scraped web content, I could have generated mock data, um, 
as long as it goes into uh, JSON format, you can post it to Elasticsearch into your index type and your ID. Um, Kibana is its a data visualization dashboarding tool. Um, looks very similar to Tableau, or you know, if you were going to build your own, obviously you'd use D3 or something along those lines. Um, when you're setting up Kibana, you have to define the index and what you want it to uh, get data from. And it shows me all of the uh, fields that were indexed, which the only ones that we indexed for this particular one was language, their favorite, the person's favorite language, and the user ID or the name of the particular user. Um, and now, since it's stored in Kibana, we can do we could build data visualizations based on any of the data that we put in here. Um, and just to show you, this was the raw JSON request body that we had sent. So it was just uh, key was name, value was TCR, language uh, was the key, and then the value was JavaScript. Um, this is just the metadata with Elasticsearch. Um, you could do scoring, and there's some other metadata fields that you can add. Um, I think even, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, you can even do um, like geolocation would be under metadata if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick dashboard and run through like setting up one visualization to show you um, kind of what it looks like. It does, it's intimidating at first to set visualizations in, in Kibana, but then after you get the hang of it, um, it's pretty simple. So some of the visual visualizations that we see here is just a regular uh, data table showing you uh, a list of names and their favorite language. <coughs> and we see a pie chart um, telling us that uh, JavaScript, out of the users that we took from, that JavaScript was the uh, primary favorite language, um, then Python, and then Ruby, and other languages that are listed here. Um, there's some other visualizations, I'll kind of show you that. We have a count of the total people that we indexed. Um, we have unique count of languages. So there was, out of those 30 users, we only had 10 uh, unique languages that we pulled from. Um, and when you create these dashboards, you can also um, save them and create your own widgets. Um, you can create uh, unique search patterns. Like for example, if I were to type in uh, Python, we could see all the Python users and just get um, account. We can also see this uh, being, being manipulated, um, or I could just say click on JavaScript and it'll render all the JavaScript uh, data within Kibana. Um, now once you start storing um, like a date timestamp to uh, with a JSON field and you index it as a date, um, you can start doing um, creating graphs and things over periods of time. So if you're going to archive <coughs> how many subscribers joined your service or if you're going to do analysis over time and you want to store it here, you could see um, times up to a year or custom, custom uh, time ranges. Um, you can also do some drag and drop to say, hey, I want to see uh, in a particular time range data and you can get deeper and deeper into it. So I like to use this as a tool um, when working with um, other APIs or other things that, that I'm uh, pulling from other sources as a way to kind of visualize it without having to have much knowledge of doing data visualizations and such. I'm going to do a very similar example uh, using Redis. Um, so Redis, what I like to use it for, and a lot of people use it for, is caching um, certain types of data structures. 
I, I even use it sometimes as a, my main data source for a prototype app I'm building or I just kind of want to store something there to keep off to the side um, that's going to be there later when I work on something. <coughs> um, and in Python, there's already a library. I um, mean, just do pip install Redis. You connect to Redis. The same examples before is we're going to iterate over users' repository or all the repos that they have and get their favorite language. Very similar example like we did for Elasticsearch. Um, we're not doing multiple users, but you know it still would work in this use case. But I just wanted to show a really basic example showing you storing data in Elasticsearch and storing it in Redis. Um, we do the same thing here, iter iterating over a JSON array, putting it to a list, um, getting the max count or the most utilized language for a particular user. Um, for set, we're just going to set the key value, so the key would be language, or lang in this case, and language would be the favorite language. Um, if you build uh, some sort of dictionary, you would set it in your hash map, and that would be hm set would be the command operation you would do in Redis. And then retrieving a value from a key would just be get, and if you wanted to get all of the key value pairs in your hash map, you would just do a h get all. So what this example looks like is, like I said, very similar to what we did for Elasticsearch, but for Redis. So just kind of showing you interchangeable, like what this particular technology looks like and then working with uh, Redis, because they all have their place, right? So like I mentioned before, full text search, um, or you want to do, you want to just store data and then build visualizations in Kibana. And like I said, that can be anything from system logs to system data. It could be like Internet of Things type of stuff. Um, any kind of data you want. It could be analysis you do locally and you want to just post it somewhere so you can keep track of it over a period of time. Um, and for Redis, I'll show you even a better example pulling this in through a web interface to build sort of dashboards. Um, I'll just kind of show you what that uh, could look like again. Um, now I'm going to show you more um, advanced example using Redis um, and I'm using Flask also and also Keen.io to store information. Um, so I'm using Redis and Keen and uh, Flask to basically uh, take input from a user um, and then storing that and then showing you different examples on what you can use Redis for and even for Keen.io. Um, so I built this uh, really quick survey app just to show you like users importing data and then what happens and how I built it using Redis. Um, so this is the dashboard that I built out. Basically, I wanted to show um, overall customer satisfaction, overall customer's dislike or like. Um, I wanted to show things for a period of time like today or a week or monthly. I wanted to show a list of recent items that were appended to a list in Redis. Um, build out some Keen.io uh, Google charts, which I'll kind of go over that quickly, and then basically just ultimately counts over periods of time. Um, so in this particular app, like let's say um, I dislike something. Um, so what, when I hit like or dislike or the smiley face or frown face, what's going to happen is that I'm going to create, I'm going to increment on a key um, and it starts at zero. So what's going to happen is I'm going to dislike my total dislikes, my daily dislikes, my weekly dislikes, and my monthly dislikes. Um, and those are all separate keys. And the reason why I increment them in Redis like that is because I can flush out the cache at those periods of time. So I can say, hey, on Sunday, flush out all of my uh, weekly keys and start over. At the end of the month, flush out my monthly keys and start over, incrementing from zero. So if I were to show you here, and I dislike uh, management, and I refresh the dashboard, 
you can see my overall customer satisfaction is sad. Overall customer dislike is management. Um, you can see my top dislike for today, this week, this month, since I have no data for a month. Um, obviously, you just see that this will populate. Um, and it, over a month period of time, if things happen during the week, you can see that. I create a list of recent dislikes. So this way, um, let's say you were a manager or you're an, a store owner or something, you can be like, okay, well, I wanna see uh, what people recently disliked and you can store that in a Redis list. <clears throat> and Keen, um, basically you can use Google Charts to pull Keen data in. They have great, uh, they have great dashboard examples already on their GitHub. I'll show you that link. And you can see my total count for dislikes is one and my total dislike count for management is one. So what this code kind of looked like, I'm just gonna do another example for like and service. <clears throat> so what this code looks like is basically I create uh, a Flask web app. Um, I'm importing the Keens client library. Um, and basically I have my my project key and my write key. I'm connecting to Redis also. Um, I basically wrote a function to uh, tell me that if my list is greater than 10, then push out the uh, write element of my list as the last, uh, like my oldest element in my list. Because uh, you have a left push and a right push. I did left as in your, as first in this particular one, and the farthest right would be the oldest. So I'm basically saying, hey, get all of the data out of Redis, if the length is uh, greater than 10, then pop out the last element on the right. Same thing for dislike. Um, as I mentioned before, get is getting the key, uh, the key value pair, or just the value in this case, of dislike, daily dislike, weekly dislike, monthly dislike. And you can use something like AP Scheduler, which is a Python library to do scheduling of certain types of tasks. Um, you can set expirations on keys. So you could say, oh, this key expires after so much period of time. Um, in this case, I wanted to keep it more um, scheduled to say that Sunday at 5 a.m. Uh, or Monday at uh, 5 a.m. I want this to flush. Uh, you would just flush out that key or that uh, certain types of sets. Um, L range just retrieves the range of the list. And I'm also doing maxes on, on uh, my other elements. And then you can see that I'm incrementing the values of like, my daily likes, my weekly likes. So that was pretty much it for this particular example, but you can see using um, storing data in Redis or Elasticsearch, how this can kind of help you out from either a workflow perspective or prototyping or just storing some sort of data uh, for the short or long term um, than just in your computer's current memory. Um, so is there any questions? I'll start taking questions now. Yep. Yeah. What are you using key for there? Oh, for these visualizations. Um, I could have used like another technology um, but I kind of wanted to demonstrate using um, very similar technologies. Like they're not like similar in the regards of like, oh, I'm going to use this for this X thing. It's like you take some sort of dictionary or key or value and you store it into these data sources and it looks very similar and retrieving it uh, looks also very similar, right? You're just basically doing puts or posts and gets. Uh, so the operations or methods are pretty much the same. Um, so, but Keen in this point is doing um, all these types of graphs. Um, you could do pie charts, you could do other types of things. Uh, the repository is on their GitHub called Keen Dashboards and basically they already kind of built out some of the uh, Google Charts uh, JavaScript stuff. So basically all you have to do is just give it your uh, reader key and your project key and it will go fetch data from Keen. And if you don't know what Keen is, 
Um, it's just a uh, software as a service, right, that sits out there and it takes in any sort of data and then you can do things, make queries over that data through their, uh, through their web uh, SaaS offering or you can obviously build your own dashboards. Um, what I really liked about Keen is, or any of these te technologies is that you can start building out any sort of visual analytics to your customers, like not just like to management, but like if you wanted to walk into a store and show that what people are most re recently purchasing, like what's their favorite food on an item or what's their favorite yogurt, um, it kind of gives you that ability to kind of bi build quick dashboards to show customers information, or it could be internal dashboards too. It doesn't have to be customer facing, but I really like Keen for that, uh, for that aspect. And of course they handle everything for you. No, so these are two separate. So Kibana is hosted locally on my laptop. I'm actually running it in a Docker container. Um, I'm running uh, Elasticsearch Kibana and Redis all in my Docker container. So this is all locally hosted. So good solution for like if you're working in the enterprise or like you're showing a mom and pop sh store like you know some basic data and you don't want to build out all the HTML and JavaScript stuff. Um, it's really easy to just put data in Elasticsearch, build out visualizations, and you can give them a link. You can set basic auth type of things with Nginx. Um, but yeah, so Keen is purely hosted, like they host all of that as a solution. And then Kibana just talks to your Elasticsearch instance and pulls the index that you defined that I went through in that one screen. Does that answer your question? Cool. Yeah. Can you compare or contrast use cases for when you would use Elasticsearch versus Mongo? Um, um, I'm, um, yeah, I was, I kind of don't really be that, want to be that guy, but like, I would just never use Mongo. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but really, like, if you just want to build something that's not going to be like Amazon.com scalable or anything, right? Just store JSON blob into a collection, right? And do things like that. You could do a very similar in Mongo too. Um, it's all kind of the same. The JSON store, document store. Um, Mongo seems to be more popular, and I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah, um, just because it's easy to get started. It's schema list, so like you don't have to define schemas and go talk about like relationships to your data. You can kind of pivot early on. Uh, in your data model essentially. So it's very powerful if you're a startup or you're a quick project and you're getting off the ground and you don't have a lot of users um, and you don't want to worry about uh, like those things I mentioned with typical SQL databases, you would use Mongo. Um, and I'm guilty, I've used Mongo before in the past. I do like it, it's just obviously after a certain part, uh, sharding gets really difficult and other things. It depends on the use cases, right? So if you're building like a typical like type of website, yeah, you, uh, you probably would use Mongo for that, right? But if you're building like search, you would want to use Elasticsearch for that. Um, and and uh, and, uh, and other things too, like if you wanted to show proximity of searches like based on people coming in, right? Uh, Elasticsearch has that built in. Uh, there's a lot of other cool features Elasticsearch has built in. But I would primarily use it for full text search or you want to store data and visualize it in Kibana. Um, you could actually create an API that sits in front of Elasticsearch to strip out the metadata fields and just show the re show the body that was stored in there. You can do that too. Um, I've never seen anybody do that, but I think I did it one time when I was keeping an inventory, uh, a lot of inventory of a lot of stuff, and <clears throat> I didn't want to deal with Mongo, so I put everything in Elasticsearch, and then I basically uh, made a, a unique uh, query to Elasticsearch to return this particular item, a uh, search in an inventory, and then basically strip out the metadata or that header field that you saw there, it was attached to the JSON uh, blob and then just return it out. So you could do stuff like that too. I just never really hear people talking about like doing that. It was just uh, pretty quick for me to just get that going. Um, I could have used Mongo too for that also. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah um, I was just looking for the, um, for the flash sockets, I Oh, um, I actually didn't do the, the WebSocket portion. I said I just kind of replaced Keen. Uh, but ultimately, that Flask app that I showed you, um, I'm going to commit it on GitHub. I didn't keep it in there because I didn't feel like exporting my 
uh, secret keys essentially to my environment. Uh, but I was planning on committing it to that same exact repo that I showed you. But uh, as of right now, all the scripts and uh, I think it's called Calca was like just a Angular front end for uh, Elasticsearch. That's all in that repository. But I was going to add this Flask project I showed you in there. So you could see more in detail exactly how I'm determining if customers are happy or sad or top items or daily things or the list of most recent likes or dislikes. Yep. Can you show us that repo again? Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yep. I don't really know what Redis is. Okay. Basic overview of common use cases. Yeah. Um, um, so basically, you could do um, all types of things. But like, if you're working with Python and you have either key value pairs or dictionaries or uh, uh, tuples or other things, and like, say, let's say they only live during your script is running and like you're happy with that, then maybe you don't want to store it in a data store. But like, let's say if you want to store things in there to either be rendered over web sockets or you want to build your own dashboard or you want to have it just sit there for like long-term use, you would just build out a key, like let's say call it a long-term uh, analyst one or something, and then you can store data in there and then you can do long-term analyst two and then you can store you know dictionary in that hash map. Um, so here's all the commands that you can run. So you can do uh, increment the integer of a hash field by a given number. Um, H get all, which shows you get all the key value pairs in that hash. You can say He'll only, only give me the value of a key in a hash or a dictionary in this case. Um, so basically just like storing data there for like short or long term. Like whether you were going to do things over a period of time or short time. Or um, if you wanted to do like a web example like I showed you. Where you can kind of build a dashboard of some of the some of the data that you would uh, uh, wrangle, and you want to kind of show that in a web view. Those would be like typical use cases. You can also do like, like for example, um, when you go to like to Pinterest.com. I don't know if it's still there anymore, but like they used to tell you like top items that like sold or like or uh, most recent things that happened, right? Is almost like a stream. You can put that in a Redis list, right? Just a list of elements. And just say, hey, show me um, top ten lit, like the top ten uh, latest entries in my list from left to right or from right to left. Um, so you could store all that in Redis. So if, if you had a script that wanted to live longer in life and not just like run, like run it, and then it does something, and then you see the results, and that's great. But you want to store it for whatever a particular reason, you can use Redis or Elasticsearch or Mongo or any any kind of uh, data store. Um, at first, it's written into memory, and then it persists after you can you can always configure this. But after so much time, I think it's like maybe minute at most, it, it persists the disks um, to a flat file uh, in Redis. You could set it to be completely memory cache if you just really didn't care about your data. But like if you cared, you can have it persist like immediately. You can have it do like batch uh, uh, persist on disk in batch mode. Um, those are all options of Redis. Um, um, there's a lot of things that play in the part, right? Whether Redis is local or um, if there's a cluster um, and how it basically writes to different nodes. Um, the performance of them, I don't, I can't speak to Redshift, um, but Redis, Redis is pretty fast. I mean, it's it's, it's really fast. I, I don't know what the numbers are. Um, but you, like you said, if you want it to be even faster, you can write uh, things to disk in batch mode, but then you might have a loss of data or it could just persist immediately to disk. And this way it's always there. Um, Lastus scales pretty well. Um, so it's really a matter up to your cluster. Uh, Redis scales also very well. Um, but ultimately it determines on the memory of your system that you have Redis installed on. So like for example, it doesn't make sense to store six key value pairs instead of just one dictionary into a hash map. 
you would save more in memory by doing that, right? But like what that equates to when it does a key value pair or a hash map, like what that memory footprint is, I'm not 100% sure. We got five more minutes for questions. Anybody got any questions? Um, so the Amazon has Elastic Cache. You can just spin up a Redis node. Um, a lot of people in the past used Memcache. Um, I like Redis uh, better. Um, so Amazon has that service. I think Redis has their own Redis cloud that you can spin up Redis nodes on. Um, of course, you can run Docker like I ran. You can just install it through your systems package manager also. Uh, but yeah, those are different things. I think even Heroku has uh, things that you can do in digital sense droplets for Redis. All right, no more questions and we're done.